wax on your Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, we welcome you. Before you. 
the one that holds my tomorrow, Lord Almighty, the one that knows about my yesterday, the one that will touch me today, I welcome you, Lord. Do something new in my life today. I have come to see you as no man. Oh yes, Lord, come into my life. I lay my body, soul, and spirit bare before you, Lord. My mind is open unto you, Lord. Fill me up this morning. Do the extraordinary, Lord. Do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Yes, Lord, I feel you so much around me this morning. And I know you are here to bless us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, majesty. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Choir, thank you so much for that song, beautiful song. Can we give uh, the Lord a clap of our choir? Thank you so well, thank you. Hallelujah. This morning, I thank the pastor for the opportunity to stand here before you. And I would love to share with you what I titled The Spiritual Gift for Special Service. The Spiritual Gift for Special Service. This month and next month, the theme of this church is the Holy Spirit. And so we are going to be talking about things relating to the Holy Spirit. So far into the month, we have said who the Holy Spirit is. And most of us know who the Holy Spirit is. For those of us that do not know who the Holy Spirit is, we say that the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the truth, he is the third person of the Trinity, and he is not a lesser person than our Lord Jesus Christ, nor the Lord God Almighty, but they are three in one performing different functions. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we clear about that? So we know what we are talking about today. We've also been opportunity to talk about the operations of the Holy Spirit in our Digging Deep on Tuesday. And our pastor taught us on the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the ninth fruit, building us up as believers to stand tall and be Christ-like in character. Today I'll be talking about gifts. The difference between the fruit and the gifts is that the gift is a gift. Amen? Amen. And so as many of us as are praying for the gift of the Holy Spirit, at the end of today you will take one home in Jesus' name. Amen. There are three sets of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Like the nine fruits, there are the nine gifts. The nine gifts are grouped into three, which I'll be sharing a third, of part, a third part of it with you today. Then I'll continue subsequently whenever I'm given an opportunity to continue teaching. Praise the Lord. Today is going to be a teaching service, so please hold your Bible and your pen or your iPad or your phone and please write down something that will be beneficiary to you. God bless you as you oblige. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 to 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11. I read. Let's be projecting so everybody can flow with me. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. For to what is given by the Spirit, please let's note this gift now, the word of wisdom, number one. To another, the word of knowledge, number two, by the same spirit. Number three, to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gift of healing, that's number four, by the same spirit. Number five, to another, the working of miracles. Number six, to another, prophecy. To another, descending of spirit, that's number seven. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. And the final one, the interpretation of tongues. Verse 11. 
But all this worketh that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Hello. As who will? He will. Who is the he? Oh. Say me. Or I. Severally as you will. So out of this nine gifts, you can decide to get all. It is what? A gift. Amen? And so if you decide it, what do you do? You put forth your hand for it. You want it. Amen? I used to call my son when he was born. I said, you stay one. Mommy, I want. Mommy, I want. So as many of us as have God as our Father should be what? Mr. Want or Mrs. Want today or Miss Wants. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now from where we have read, we have seen the ninth spirit. And this ninth spirit is divided into three groups. The first said, we call it what? Revelational gifts. These gifts do what? Reveal things. And number one of it is what? The word of wisdom. The word of wisdom talks about revelation in the future. Now, the word of knowledge, amen? The word of knowledge is the one that talks about the now and the past. And then the descending of spirit. The descending of spirit talks about the now. The pastor says, there's a man that walked in here, come out, he has so and so spirit. That is what? Descending spirit. Amen? The Lord tells him through the Holy Spirit power, and then he knows, he reveals unto him. So these are called what? Revelational knowledge. What do they do? They reveal. Praise the Lord. Example of wisdom, word of wisdom is, you know, like Elijah said, by this time, tomorrow, flower will cause to so fan. So that is what? Word of wisdom. And the word of knowledge is, for example, in the camp where we were in Nigeria, a man was, you know, the, the word of knowledge came and said, there's a man here who wished he could be taller. Hello? Who was the short man in the Bible? Zacchaeus. Amen. Who jumped to the tree? The man said, oh, I wish I could be taller. And so the man of God said, our general of Asia said, receive the spirit of tallness. And as he spoke it, he said, check your trouser. And so when he looked at his trouser, his trouser was shorter. I was in the camp that day. Amen. And that was what? Word of knowledge. Amen. And then the third one, the descending of spirit, is there was a time we were meeting and the general of Asia said, there are witches here in this house, in this campground. They came here to perform some things, and God is stopping them right now. If you don't come out for deliverance today, whatever came out comes out of you or for you, take it away, you see it. And then I saw about 2,000 witches come out too. I was like, oh my God. And one of them was the woman that sat by me. You know, when she came and she passed by me, she touched me. I felt something, some strange spirit. And I told my husband, I said, that oh, woman, there's something wrong with that woman. Praise the Lord. That was spirit of descendant or descending of spirit. Now the second set are the power gifts. The power gifts are the power working gifts. As the name is the work power. Amen. And one of them is what? The gift of faith that we read. And this gift of faith can do anything. And so they told Jesus, oh Lazarus is dead and smelly. What did Jesus do after four days? He slipped. Oh. Was that a sleep after four days? Somebody smelling? No. But he had this strong faith. And so he said, Lazarus, come forth. Did Lazarus come forth? Yes. Today, somebody will get that faith after now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the next one, the fifth gift, is the gift of healing under the power gift. And this gift of healing was manifested in the first time. When the disciples went to the gate called Beautiful, and they saw one lame man. And they told him, so long ago we have none, for what we have we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That is what? Gift of healing. And he stood up and he walked. Praise the Lord. Somebody will receive that gift today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the, the sixth one is the working of miracles. Praise the Lord. The working of miracles. This is what happens, you know, you can call it um, gift of healing, it works together, but miracle can be another thing happening to you without healing. 
Oh, you know, praise the Lord. Receive the brain to always excel. That's, that's what? Miracle. miracle. Can suddenly you just start seeing yourself, you know, doing some extraordinary things. Or receive the knowledge, you know, to excel above others. Suddenly you start doing some projects, some things you can't imagine. That is what? Working of miracles. It came not because we desire, uh, I mean, not because we deserve it, but because somebody spoke a word into you, or God revealed it to you. Amen. So these things are come either by spoken word, and other things we're going to discuss that as we go on. Now the third set of the gifts is inspirational gifts. What are inspirational gifts? They are vocal gifts. Speak, say it, and it works. This year, the general verse has told us that we need to do what? Speak more. Amen? What do you speak? The word of God. What do you speak? What you want according to the will of God. And these gifts are what? The gift of prophecy. That's number seven. It's grouped under inspirational gift or vocal gifts. The gift of prophecy. Now, another one is what? The gift of tongues. Please, the gift of tongues is different from the speaking of tongues that we all spoke this morning. Amen? The gift of tongues is somebody is speaking in a, a tongue, like what happened at the day of Pentecost. It's a language that somebody else must understand. And then there must be people to interpret that tongue. Amen? Amen. They say if you speak in tongue in the church and they are, you speak two times, nobody to interpret, you should just keep quiet. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit gives it to you. What is it for? It's to edify the church. But how do you use it? You will use it in orderliness, not in disorderliness. Praise the Lord. So we have nine gifts now. Amen? Amen. Now, in the body of Christ, there are many members. Many members. We have teachers like myself. We have pastors like a pastor. I'm also a pastor and a teacher. He's a pastor and a teacher and a prophet. Praise the Lord. We also have prophets. Praise the Lord. We have many prophets here. And we have a lot of evangelists within the church of God. But only one spirit walking in them. This you can find in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. I'm taking you somewhere. Follow me, please. Now, there is one body and one spirit. And even as we have been called in one hope of our calling, Ephesians 4, 4. There is one hope of our calling. We are all called, but one spirit performing different functions. That is what we'll be talking about today. Now, the spiritual gifts in the Greek world is known as charisma. And this charisma can be called charismata when it is spiritual gifts. And the Bible says we have what? Spiritual gifts. Many gifts. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. The Holy Spirit operates in manifestation of these gifts listed as we have earlier listed. Now the purpose is to build up the church of God. And every believer, you and I, is expected to do what? Have at least one of these gifts. You can have all the nine if you can. It will cost you a lot. Amen? You can have three. You can have six. You can have two. You can have one. The choice is yours. How available are you for the gifts? Now the difference is between the spiritual gifts and the fruit of the Spirit, like I've earlier explained, I want to read what I wrote down here, is that the fruit of the Spirit is the normal outcome of Christian growth. You're growing from a believer to a sanctified believer and to speaking in tongues and to all of that, you are growing. And it is why to manifest Christ-like character in your life. That is the purpose of the fruit of the Spirit. Now, the gift of the Spirit cannot be earned. Hello? It cannot be earned. Why? Because they are gifts that God has done what? Given to the church. So it's not by living holy, by, you know, by coming to church every time. You can't earn it, but you can desire it. But there are qualifications for it at the same time. Praise the Lord. Now, the simplest way we can, you know, describe these nine gifts is that three of them say something. What do they say? The inspirational gifts. What do they say? They say something. What are they? The prophecy, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Amen? Now, 
the power gifts are what? Faith, working of miracles, and gifts of healing. That's what we'll be dealing on today. I'll we'll be talking on history intensively today. And then the revelational gifts are what? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the signing of spirit. Good, good student. Praise the Lord. Now, the basic requirement to obtain this gift are that, number one, you must be born again. For you to be able to obtain this gift, you must be born again. And then you must be willing to walk with who? The Holy Spirit himself. If you are not born again, the Holy Spirit cannot enter your life. And the Bible says the indwelling spirit, that means the spirit of God dwells in us richly. And when you allow the spirit of God to dwell in you, you can't continue in sin. He won't even be there for you because he is called what? Holy. And so everything about the Holy Spirit has to be holy. And then you must you must believe in these spiritual gifts. You cannot receive what you don't believe in. Amen? You must believe that it's, it's possible. It works. And so you can receive the gifts. And so you also have to do what? Number four, pray endlessly for these gifts. Desire it. Pray, Father, Lord, give me this gift. I need it. Why do you need to walk with these gifts? Because it is to the glory of God. Now, let us discover the spiritual gifts. How do you discover it? How do you know about it? Fine, I'm teaching you now. But how do you know about it? You must know and believe that this gift do what? Exists. That it's possible for you to have it. Amen? And then you must begin to do what? To practice and to develop them. How? By intensively praying. By intensively trying to walk holy with God by desiring the gift of, of this Holy Spirit. And then you must also examine and confirm that it is the gift. When the prophecy comes, confirm it is, oh, that was prophecy. That was, you know, somebody said, oh, you prayed with me the other day and God did this. That was what? Gift of faith. Hello? You held somebody's hand and you believed you prayed over it. That was what? You know, most of these gifts are interwoven. Sometimes the gift of faith can be gift of prophecy. He said, make declarations in my life. Declare. That is what? Prophesy. Praise the Lord. And so as believers, we have been taught in this ministry at all times to always do what? Prophesy. And then discover how it works. How is it by laying on hands? Is it by believing God? Is it by prayers? How do these gifts work? Identify it, know how it works, and pray for it. And then confirm their manifestation as they come. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When it comes, begin to confirm it by what sharing testimonies, sharing with somebody that you know the other day I spoke it came to power. Oh, you know, let's let begin to develop it. Amen. And give God all the glory. <clears throat> Today I'll be dealing on these three power gifts: the gift of faith, the gift of healing. The working of miracles. Why did I choose this three to talk on today? I'll talk on the other one maybe another time. The gift of faith is very essential in the church of God today. Why is it very essential? The reason is that in today's world, the church is being heavily attacked. And so you need to have a strong faith to stand as a Christian and as a believer. Amen? Don't be a religious Christian. Be what? A walk with God Christian. Let your life be you and I, you and Christ, and you and the Holy Spirit at all times in this present dispensation. Now, the gift of faith, I picked that up first, is the ability to believe God supernaturally. Hello? Hallelujah. Believe God what? Supernaturally. When Elijah was like, put water, put wood, and all of that, what was he trying to do? He was trying to exercise his faith. Faith is something that is not normal. Was it normal to pour water on the firewood? No. no. But he did that. Who was, what was he trying to say? 
My God is very great in me. The God I believe in is a very great God. And that is what we need in the age of this now. That people are telling you your God cannot save you. Your God is good for nothing. Oh, our life is live as we like. Then you tell them that my own God is a special God that I can live not as I like, but according to his will. Because God is highly principled. Praise the Lord. So, this gift can only be used, you know, without doubt and unbelief. Hebrews 11.6 is my favorite passage. Hebrews 11.6. He said, but without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must do what? Believe that he is. And that he is what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must believe that he exists. The reason is that you don't even believe God is existing. Why do you hope that he can help you in danger? Amen? God says you cannot please him. You don't believe in his existence. He doesn't just stop there. He said what? He rewards diligence. What is diligence? Deep commitment. Amen? Discipline. Deep commitment. Oh, well, you know, while everybody's sleeping by seven I'm in church, because I don't want to miss the prayer team in the morning. While people are still busy doing other things, I am praying. I am studying the word of God. I am with God, believing that as much as I am in his presence, blessings will come. Blessings may not come immediately, but blessings will come eventually. eventually. Good. Thank you for that word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Blessings will come eventually. And so I'm not afraid of what I'm seeing. I'm not even moved by what I am seeing. I know I have a great God. If not, how could, you know, how could David run through a troop and, you know, climb over the wall? How? It was sheer faith. I could run through faith. I could run through a troop. I could jump over the fence. How? Because he knows that this God is with me. And so when God is with you, he shields you. And then your faith is stronger in him. You must trust him that he rewards every faithfulness. Number two point on faith is that it enables you and empowers you for greater works. Number first was what? You must believe that God exists. Believe in God's existence. That's number one. And then know that there is ability if you believe in to do the supernatural. The supernatural is what? The extraordinary, the abnormal. Amen. Amen. And so doctor is giving you this report about yourself and you just say, well, that is doctor's report, but this is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, I receive healing. And so you hold on to it by faith. You keep praying over it and say, God, I'm not believing that terminal sickness in my life. That is what strong faith. And so you keep praying, and then one year passes, two years passes, like somebody was sharing with me. The mother went to the hospital, they declared her cancer or whatever, and she said, no, she's a strong believer. The mom is a strong believer. I said, that's the doctor's report. And so the doctor may give you, you're going to die tomorrow, next tomorrow. You know what? She said, five years running now, she's still alive. Hallelujah. No pains, no nothing. Hallelujah. So we've got to do what? Exercise our faith in this year. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us in John 14, 12, which is our, our verse in the, in, in the SOD, greater works than this shall ye do. If you do what? Believe. Amen. He that believeth on me, Greater works shall he do. Amen? And so you need to do greater works like raising the dead that Jesus raised, even the dead that is longer than four, four days. That's the greater work because Jesus did the, the one of four days. Amen. Amen? And then you must believe that every word that God says is for real, is true. And so it will work for you. <coughs> Number three points. The gift of faith empowers you for boldness. 1 Kings 17, 1. Let's look at this man of faith, Elijah, the man that could call down fire from heaven. 1 Kings 17, 17, 1. Amen. 
And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel given, before whom I stand, they shall not be due nor rent this year, but according to my word. And you know what? I always say, it as a, which word did Elijah get that is according to my word? The Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so when he was speaking, it was not actually his word. It was the word of God. The Lord God Almighty was living in him at that time. That was speaking. Amen? Amen. And so you and I can do the same. According to my word, I declare. And let me tell you, when you declare a thing without wavering in your, in your faith, it comes to pass. I declare I'm going to be the president of my country. You know, you can say it. And then when you declare it, you believe it. And God starts molding you. And you know how God does like David. He will bring you from the backside of the desert and bring you to the king's palace. And then you are living and studying how it is. And then, like Moses. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What is your heart thinking? Oh, my enemies are after me. Oh, the witches want to kill me. Oh, they want to finish me. Yes, they are there. But what are you saying? Greater is he that is in me than he that is out there. Praise the Lord. I can overcome all things because I have a very mighty God living in me. Amen. 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 Number four point on that faith. By this faith, giving can be, blessings can be pronounced miraculously and can change permanently the whole course of one's life. Let's look at First Kings 18.41. You can pronounce it. He said, the same Elijah. What did he say? I hear. Did he hear anything? It was the sound of faith. Amen? And Elijah told, uh, said unto Ahab, Get me up, eat and drink, for there is what? Sound of abundance of rain. Did he see rain after three years' drought? No rain. People were eating their children. And yet somebody stood up. And say, oh, I hear. And I have. Get up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh my God. Men of faith can do the extraordinary. And you just like, can it be possible? Only what? Believe. Only do what? Believe. That's what God desires from you. If you believe and leave all these frivolities, all these shortcuts, all these attachments, sin is an attachment. Tell your neighbor, sin is an attachment. God abhors it. It does not allow you to, to receive the full blessings of God. It doesn't. And you know, you tell the, long, the young ones, they're like, what is mommy talking about? Sin is a bait of the devil. Mm -hmm. No, he tackles it before you. Hey, eat it. Oh, he's nice. And he just hooks you. It's a bait. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, the gift of faith is also used for the ministering of the Holy Spirit baptism. Galatians 3, 5. Let's quickly read it and we will be running. Amen. Galatians 3, 5. Are you there before me? Praise the Lord. He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and walked miracles among you, do it, he is by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He hears the Spirit. And then he does what? He ministers by the same Spirit. As you see somebody in the midst of trouble and the person is so calm. Ah, you'll be wondering, what's wrong with this one? Everybody is panicking. Oh, God bless Apostle Paul. There was trouble. People were fasting for days. And he said, ah. People have not eaten bread for 11 or 12 days now. I heard, who told him? I heard this night, I saw it in a vision. God told me that this one, there will be no loss of life. It's only the ship that will go. How? In a big ocean, only ship will go. They throw away all their luggages. He said, no single life will be lost. You know, many of them like me, they can't know how to swim. And they were over 200, you know, am I right? 200 or 120, 140, 240, something, 100. There were many. Hundreds of them. Praise the Lord. A man woke up and spoke faith. And after that, God wants to raise giants, a uh, uh, fake giant that will be speaking faith into troubled situations of life. Speak faith. 
and God will help me as I'm even preaching to begin to exercise this faith in Jesus' name. Faith expects a miracle, and those who receive it, faith expects, not that, faith expects a miracle, and those who receive it, it's not wavering, it's not doubting. And when you have the gift of faith, you experience calmness, peace. When everything is, you know, shaking around you, the inner strength, no matter what you are passing through, that's what faith does to you. Praise the Lord. I'll be talking now on what the gift of healing, the second gift. Under what power gives. That's what I'm handling today. The gift of healing. Now, like faith, the gift of healing is a power gift because it is done supernaturally. Without any natural or medical means. When faith is exercised, the sick is healed. Am I right? Yes. And so what is that called? Gift of the healing. Like the lame man at the beautiful gate. And so this gift can be expressed by laying on of hands. Hello? Right. The gift of healing can be done what? Like daddy prays you or any of the ministers receive your healing and people are healed. That is what? By laying on of hands. Example is when Jesus healed the leper in Matthew 8 verse 3. Matthew 8 verse 3. Matthew 8 verse 3. Praise the Lord. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. It was abnormal for a normal person to touch a leper. But Jesus did what? Touched him. And he received his healing. He had faith that he could heal him, and so when he touched him, the leprosy left him. And number two, by spoken words, how can this working of healings be done? Number two, by speaking. Now in Matthew 8 verse 8, let's look at Matthew 8 verse 8 and verse 13. Matthew 8 verse 8. Praise the Lord. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should thus come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the self-same self -same hour. Praise the Lord. The gift of healing also, like faith, depends on what? Belief. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, believe. 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 When you believe, you can speak. When you believe, you can touch. Anything can happen. Praise the Lord. And the third point is by revelational knowledge. <coughs> by revelational knowledge. Acts 9, 10 to 11. This is about the conversion of Paul called Saul of Tarsus. Acts chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Now, there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Who was he? A disciple. And to him said the Lord in vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. 11. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul, Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. What was that? Revelational knowledge. Saul at this time was blind and needed what? Healing. And so God needed to tell Ananias, who was a disciple, to go to him, to pray for him, to receive back his sight. And so the gifts of healing can come by revelational knowledge. You have to you know, know that this person, sometimes they don't like it. So I didn't want to bother that. I didn't want to bother. I said, no, I know you're not feeling well. That's relational knowledge. And so he prays, and the person receives healing. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Number four, and the last for the healing, by anointing with oil. James 5, 14. James chapter 5, verses 14 down to 16. James 5. 
Okay. Praise the Lord. If any is any among you sick, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Fifteen to sixteen. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Sixteen. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man and the next much. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. And so this is another means of receiving the gift of healing by anointing. You normally have anointing service once in a while. You need to anoint everybody against spirit of sickness and oppression. Praise the Lord. Now number three of the power gifts I'll be talking on now is the working of miracles. Number one was what? Okay. Number two was what? Healing. healing. Gifts of healings. And then the working of miracles. Many. What is miracle? Miracle, I define it as an extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known human or natural power. This one they say is beyond natural powers. Amen. And is ascribed to a supernatural cause. This one is only God that can do it. This is not normal. Amen. And so this is the gift that God is giving to the church freely. Now when we read the story of the widow of Zelophehad in 1 Kings 17, 12 to 16. We see how Elijah, the same man called Elijah, did something there. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. We all know the story. We read it down. We see that Elijah now said, okay, make for me first, and then you can eat the rest. And as she took the oil from the pot, the oil did not finish, because he told him, go and bring more pots, borrow it from your neighbors. And she took as many as she could, and showed them and said, how many pots, this one is enough. <coughs> many of us don't have the extended faith for greater working of miracles. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Amen. You need extended faith for the working of miracles in your life. And the prophet told him, if you had done it even six times, you would have defeated your enemy finally. Now we are in the season of fasting and prayers. Oh, 49 days. Ah, how can I? Amen. And we've just done nine nine days. And it's like the normal thing. The remaining 40 days. Ah, so 40 days still remaining. Praise the Lord. But to the glory of God, it is not by might nor by power. Humanly you'll be hungry. Humanly you'll be tired. Humanly you just don't feel you may be sick even. But by the Spirit of God. Amen. You can do all things because Christ does what? Strengthens you. It's not you. All you need to do is Holy Spirit, I desire to do this fasting to the end. The Bible says that put it forth his hand into the plow and look it back is not worthy of the kingdom. I'm not ready to stop midway. I'm not ready to do one day and stop. I'm not even ready to break midday. I want to finish to the end. And then the Holy Spirit sees your heart. This is what the Holy Spirit works on. Our thoughts, our desire, our heart. I can't stay without a girl for one day. The Holy Spirit can help you stay for 100 days without a girl. You don't just heal yourself to the Holy Spirit. So I say, no, I can't. I know my baby. I can't. You just look at them. You can do all things through Christ that transcends you. What's your mindset? What's your mind like? 
everything is in your mind. And you can do anything when you believe with your heart. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The one working of miracles that really used to baffle me every time I read it is the miracle of Elisha taking a piece of wood. How many of us read sciences here? How many of us are scientists in this room? How many of us read sciences? See hands. How many few of us? Why do we hear science like this? Business. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the sciences, we know the science of magnetism. That two metals can only attract themselves. And never the other way. Wood is not a conductor. Am I right? It doesn't conduct anything like paper. Does paper conduct? <laughs> and so you carry paper and throw it inside something and expect it to know it's not magnet. But Elisha did, you know, the, 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 the unthinkable. He took a piece of wood and threw it in, and the axe head that fell inside came up. Praise the Lord. How? Purely supernatural. Why? Because he received the power when he got the mantle. School of disciples. What is the mantle of a disciple? The Holy Spirit. That's the mantle. We are taught in the school of disciples that the Holy Spirit is our mantle. And that prayer is our walking stick. Yeah. And so as a disciple, you cannot move and eat without praying. Mm. Ah, you pray too much. This your own is too much. Your spirituality is too much. It is better to be too much old than to be nothing. <laughs> no, yeah. they finish you. Yeah. You can't say you are for Christ and then you are not defending the other side. They will finish you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so he got this mantle that was empowering him for a double portion anointing. And he saw what his master used to do. Did he do it before? No. That's why we say you should do what? Exercise it. Receive the gift and do what? Begin to exercise it. I know that at the end of today, many of us receive this gift and will go out there and begin to exercise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When I got converted newly, I just came back from the crusade. Many of us know about Uma Ukwai in Nigeria. And then I attended the program and then I got born again. I didn't even have, know whether I have any gift of healing or any gift. I just came back. My grandmother was very sick. Two days she was in bed. She couldn't even get up. I just came with that faith. I said, in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And I prayed over her. I laid my hands on her. I prayed over her. And she just stood up. Praise the Lord. So after now, begin to do what? Exercise your gifts. I don't know what gift you desire today. But after now, I want you to go out there and begin to exercise this gift. And as you're exercising this gift, it's going to work. And tell somebody when it begins to work. That, oh, you know, I laid hand on somebody and somebody, she came well. I prayed for something, it came to pass. Praise the Lord. That's power gift. Gift of faith. Gift of healing. Gift of working of miracles. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why do you need the power of working of miracles? Number one. Why do you need the power of working of miracles? Number one is to enable you to carry out divine assignments. As soon as you become a believer, you will become an evangelist. Amen? Maybe you are sharing a word of God like back home in Nigeria, not yet that you are not allowed to go out and minister. Every Saturday from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we are on, our, on the streets witnessing. And so you carry your traps and you go to somebody's house and knock the gate. And said, so we come to share the gospel of Christ with you. And he said, ah, welcome. Uh, I no, don't have time for you now. My son is very sick. Please, I'm attending to him. You say, eh, your son is sick. Praise God. That's why we are even here. To laugh. Praise the Lord. You give hi. Very boost man. You say, what's wrong with this one? And you say, mother, where is he? He brings it. okay. In the name of Jesus, whom we pray, rise up and walk. Receive your healing now. And the young man said, and stood up and said, Mom, give me food to eat. And the mother said, Oh, for three days she has not eaten food. Ah, tell me more. Will the person not welcome you? Yes. She welcome you. Praise the Lord. And so, even in taxi, I are not allowed to minister here. Even somebody is in taxi, the taxi driver is not feeling well, pray for him. Tell him, Can I pray with you? You will be well. 
That's not the same. What works in the ears is what? Well. <laughs> Amen. You say, I pray now. And then you pray. And it gets well. And they say, ah, that prayer worked too. Next time we'll be looking for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number one is to carry out divine assignment. That's why we need the working of miracles. Number two, to display God's power and magnificence. Acts 5, 12. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. Acts 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Acts 8, 5 and 6. <laughs> Acts 8, 5 and 6. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people would want that God gave him unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And so you need to exercise this miracle, you know, to display God's power. People believe your God in you more when you begin to perform miracles. And they come to my church and, this, and then your life is the other way. No, begin to perform the miracles that you are doing. Number three, to carry out divine judgment and discipline. The working of miracles enables you to carry out what divine judgment and discipline. Like the case of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5. We know the story very well. And Apostle Peter stood up and said, what did you do? And he said this and that. He said, oh, you lied to the Holy Spirit of God. And he just fell and died. Praise the Lord. When there is the power of working of miracles, people won't be coming to church anyhow. And you wake up from your, you and your girlfriend in one bed, you walk to church with dirty, smelly body. And you come and sit down before Holy God. How do you expect God to bless you? How? And then you, you know, you just say, have you prayed? Hey, I, I have not even got to go or walk. This is my resident permit. They have not given me. How will they give you? When your life is not straight. Yeah. Holy Spirit cannot work any miracle in your life when you are not living holy. Amen. Full stop. Amen. If you want God to walk in you, begin to walk with God. God. Number four. To deliver people in danger. Like what Paul did. That's working on miracles with his faith being exercised. Luke 8, 22 to 25 will tell us how Jesus came. You can write it down, Luke 8, 22 to 25. Jesus came, the storms. He was sleeping, and then they woke him up. And he just woke up. What did he do? Peace be still, and the storm just came. He was there, eh? And they were already panicking. Is this the thing that wants to kill us? My life is ending. Oh, one woman saved a whole plane full of people. Praise the Lord. And so anytime you are traveling in the plane, on the road, in the car, anywhere, just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in the gap for this vehicle. And every soul here, none of us will perish in this journey. Prophesy, speak, and the miracles will follow. Praise the Lord. Number five, to confirm the preached word in order to lead sinners to repentance. The working of miracle example is Elimas. Who was struck blind in Acts 13, Acts 13, 4 to 12. The words that we speak are not empty. They carry weight. They carry what? Weight. They carry meaning. Why? Because the word of God is what? Life and spirit. Where there is life and where there is spirit, there is what? Power. Praise the Lord. Let's be outstanding. The Lord wants to bless so many people this morning. I don't know about you, but I know about myself. Choir, please be on your stand. The bell is ringing. One of the requirements is that God wants us to arise in faith, in holiness, in purity. None of us can walk any of these miracles or have any of these gifts except we live holy. 
give us worship song as we pray. Oh. categories of people we want to pray for this morning. Those that need the Holy Spirit in their lives and you. If you need the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God is in the house. Just come out for prayer. And then the gifts of God will be distributed this morning. I strongly believe that God wants to raise men and women in this ministry that will go out there like Philip Stephen, Apostle Paul, and do the work of God. God is calling you. You are yearning for the Spirit. But you know that you are not in right standing with God. Maybe this morning you did one thing wrong. Yesterday maybe you told a single lie. You want to rectify it before God. You want God to walk in your life. You want the power of God to move in you. The power of God is in this meeting this morning. And God is about to do something great this morning. I want you to raise up your hands as we pray for you. Holy Spirit divine. There are two hands lifted up, there are three hands. Please kindly come forward. We want to pray with you. And we impact you with the Holy Spirit power that you want. Please come out, ushers. Please come to your back. There are two people there. That I am. Please come forward. You want the power of God to move in your life. It's not, it's not, it's not by baggage, but by religion. You want to decide to do. Please lift up your hands and surrender to the Holy Spirit. 
Dumped up to the joints and break my head. And love for no time. I left them away. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please let's, let us pray for Jonah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for obeying the power of God. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. This is the time. Now is acceptable time. We need to know Holy Spirit. We don't have tomorrow for ourselves. We have only now. We don't even have the whole of today in our hands. It's only now that we have. It's a gift you desire in your heart, begin to pray, begin for it. You want the gift of prophecy, you want the gifts of healing, working of miracles, begin to pray. Close your eyes, those of you in front. As many as are there and desire this gift, and you know you're born again, you have been sanctified. I command you all to come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out and receive this gift and become heroes for Christ. Become heroes for Christ. Become heroes for Christ. Come out. If you don't have any of these gifts that we have talked about today, or the gift of prophecy, or the gift of revelational knowledge, or the gift of the word of wisdom, and you desire it, come out. The prayer is open for you now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please come forward. We're going to pray for you. Pastor and the doctor, you help me because of time. So I can so all of us standing there, we have the gifts we don't want. Our lives are not straight yet with God. We are still fighting between. In between. God help you after now. Holy Spirit, this is your season. Give me a strong song. The choir. All of them, all of them will be praying for afresh. As many of the gifts, I give you one minute. So begin to pray on what you want God to do for you. Say categorically what gift you want. You want the nine gift, be ready for it. It's going to be a little bit tasking, but it's a gift. You can carry the load of it. If you want the walking of miracles, the three gifts, the four gifts, two gifts, the one gift, pray God is an opportunity you may never have in life. Lift up your hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give her the gift.